8 Incredible Financial Gurus Share Their Finance Secrets 1. You become wealthier by giving away money. According to Jean Chatsky, when you donate money to support something that you believe in, you're able to move outside of yourself and feel as though you're helping someone whose issues are different from the daily troubles that you encounter. NBC's Today Show's finance editor Chatsky is the author of several books, including Age Proof, Living Longer Without Running Out of Money or Breaking a Hip. That viewpoint is incredibly essential because it forces you to think wider and deflects attention from the ordinary issues you deal with every day, the author said. 2. Choose a compatible spouse. If you're married to someone who consistently makes poor financial decisions, it doesn't matter how smart your financial decisions are. You don't need to wed Suze Orman or Dave Ramsey, but you do need a partner who shares your financial aspirations and view on life in general. Our financial success was very much a result of this. He was good at pursuing a graduate degree in a worthwhile profession, concentrating on advancing his career, and making frequent and early investments, according to money. But having a partner who is excellent at managing money and paying off debt was a big assistance. I was good on attack, she was good on defense, to borrow a line from the millionaire next door. We made a great team, together. We had a plan for what we intended to accomplish, divided up the work, and worked together to climb the financial mountain. Your attention shifts to the areas where you can make a difference, whether it's in the global context, the context of an illness, or the context of a community. To accomplish something greater than yourself, you'll make use of your resources and assistance. I believe that is what it is all about, and for that reason, those that give back are frequently happier, healthier, and even wealthier individuals. 3. Be mindful of 401k fees. Tom Ziegainer, CEO of America's Best 401k, said, People don't know inherently, in any investment, there are fees and they have mathematical ramifications over time. The distinction between 3% and 1% must be understood. Learn about the 2 and 1% fees. Your retirement funds may be reduced by fees by 10 to 20% over time, according to Ziegainer. Considering that we're living longer, it's a huge amount of money. You can get started by carefully reading the small print and noting the expense ratio. If you can locate a retirement account with a lower expenditure ratio, you want to look further to determine whether you need to switch funds. 4. Enjoy life without using credit cards. It's very simple to get credit. It's just a part of our culture, but your life doesn't have to incorporate it. Without credit cards, you can still enjoy life. I enjoy spending money and going shopping, but I detest credit cards, says Rachel Cruz, a best-selling author on the New York Times book list. Cruz is Dave Ramsey's daughter, a personal financial expert. Because credit card issuers make it so simple to rack up debt, the majority of Americans overspend. By the time the end-of-month bill arrives, you have actually spent a lot more than you had anticipated. It seems as though you are looking back at your life through a rearview mirror. You're living in the past when your salary comes in. You are paying for activities you have already engaged in, as well as films and meals you have already consumed. How can you live a happy life without credit cards then? Cruz advises that you create a budget based on zero dollars. This is where you put every dollar you spend on paper. You equalize your revenue and expenses at the beginning of the month by deducting your expenses from your income. Use the baby step strategy to guide you once your budget is in place. Financial fanciful tales have been told to me. A friend of mine took out a loan on her retirement savings to finance the production of her own one-woman play. Because credit is pointless, the relative had never applied for one. Well, good luck in NYC trying to find an apartment without it. Let's not forget that ex-co-worker who was all about leasing brand new BMWs, according to author and millennial money expert Stephanie O'Connell. 5. Assets preceding cash. The first lesson of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, is that the wealthy do not work for money, according to the book's author Robert Kiyosaki. That stimulates your brain. So, for whom in the world do they actually work? If you behave like a mule and chase the carrot, the money, the bonus, the salary, the commission, or whatever you people chase, you'll never stop to consider the question, what are the affluent working for? For assets, I labor. This particular oil company recently failed. I was thrilled when its stock, which was then worth $75, sank to $2. $2 out of $70. They had large oil reserves, assets in the earth, and the stock was trading at $2 when I looked into the analysis at the base of it. Then do I pay $2? No. I purchase a $2 option for 75 cents. 
Money is the issue. Money is a fool. It keeps becoming corrupted as we print it over and over again. And it's poisonous. Instead than working for money, begin accumulating assets. Think critically. 6. Have fun while saving for the future. You can travel, amass coins, or buy for antiques. The secret is to plan ahead when you save and spend money on such things. This is from Chris Hogan, a financial advisor and the author of the best-selling book, Retire Inspired. It's not an age, it's a financial number. Be sure to have all of your debt paid off, to be following a budget, to have a sizable emergency fund, and to have your investments in good standing before you begin. 7. Buy an automobile that fits your needs and your budget. You're buying a car that you can't afford, according to personal finance guru Clark Howard, if your monthly payments are too high to pay off the loan in 42 months. Just forget about the popular 60 and 72 month loans, people. Why is that? It's considered upside down to stretch a payment that far. The amount you owe on the vehicle exceeds its value. You are caught in a cycle of debt that is never ending. Additionally, Howard advises using a credit union for your auto loan. Usually writes auto loans at 1.5 points below the banks and 4 points below what you'd pay at a dealership, says a credit union. 8. Make room for minor indulgences. Create a savings account with names once you've made a budget. The New York Times best-selling author of Rich Bitch claims that by doing this, you know exactly what you're saving for. According to Nicole Lappin, I support the morning latte since it makes maintaining a budget more tenable. You won't wind up overpaying on an expensive item later if you allow yourself minor indulgences now. For more similar videos, subscribe to this channel.